And now to AIDS and HIV prevention. We'll talk to Keith Boykin, the founder of the National Black Justice Coalition, in just one minute. But first, a leading gay rights group is upsetting many by portraying AIDS as a disease that is unique to gay people. Here's CNN's Chris Lawrence. The message is simple but stunning. And it comes not from bigots, but the Los Angeles Gay and Lesbian Center. For 25 years, you've been saying HIV is not a gay disease. Now you're saying it is. HIV is impacting our community more than any other in Los Angeles, and we've got to do something about it. Lori Jean says gay men have become complacent about AIDS and now make up 75% of HIV cases in Los Angeles County. It breaks my heart that these numbers are still as high as they are. She aimed billboards above Santa Monica Boulevard at the general public but sent these posters to bars and bookstores in LA's gay community. Some say the only thing this campaign will end is 25 years of progress. We're going backwards. Elizabeth Marte is HIV positive. She's been living with the virus for 13 years since her boyfriend infected her. When you see a campaign like this, how does that make you feel? It pisses the hell out of me. I'm a 44-year old woman. I'm a single parent. I have three teenagers. I have a 25-year-old son. What are they going to go around saying, oh, mommy, I can't get infected because only gay men get infected? I don't want that message to go to my children. Nationwide, the number of women with HIV is rising. Just last month, the New York Department of Health asked outreach agencies not to solely target gay men. And the CDC is so concerned, it's recommending every adult get tested because the HIV virus has a face, and it's your face and it is my face. But some say previous messages were too soft and indirectly caused complacency among gay men. These young kids, they think, oh, well, if I get it, I get it, and, you know, there are pills to take. Well, you know, I've seen a lot of people that, you know, it's not quite that easy. Nothing is when it comes to both AIDS and AIDS awareness. Chris Lawrence, CNN, Los Angeles. And joining me now to talk more about the controversy is Keith Boykin. He's the founder and former president of the National Black Justice Coalition, and he is the host of Black Entertainment Television's My Two Cents. Good to see you, Keith. Good All right, to see you, so Frederica. what are you afraid is happening here from this ad campaign? Well, the danger, Frederica, is that if you send the message that AIDS is a, HIV is a gay disease, you discourage people who are not gay from paying attention. And you also stigmatize gay people in, into going back to where we were 25 years ago when the epidemic first began. I think it's a dangerous message. It requires much more subtlety and complexity than we see here. Are you just as stunned as you are offended that this kind of campaign would be taking place? I, I am stunned. I'm a little offended. I understand the motivation behind it. I support the goal in terms of reaching the gay community and talking to them about HIV and AIDS. But I don't support the, the mechanism in which they are, they are going about this. I think it's a, it's a dangerous step to, to try to move this direction and to tell people that their community is largely responsible. Now, the good thing about this is that it's getting people talking. If that may be the only good thing about it. But the, but the problem is that we're talking on the same, same topic we were talking about 25 years ago. It's time to make progress and understand that everybody is responsible for HIV prevention. And right, so while well, I was going to ask you, while it is great to get people talking, uh, because so often people don't want to have dialogue about AIDS as a whole, aren't we kind of backtracking? Are we going backwards and kind of reliving or going back to old dialogue and then trying now to correct it all over again? Well, that's exactly the problem, Frederica. You know, I wrote a book last year called Beyond the Down Low, Sex, Lies, and Denial in Black America. And it was all about the problem in the African-American community with the whole issue of the down low, men who have sex with men but don't identify as gay. And the, the challenge is to get people to focus on the real issues when we talk about AIDS. We need to talk about what you can do to prevent AIDS. We need to talk about needle exchange programs that we know work that they help to reduce transmission and don't increase new drug use. We need to talk about prisons and condoms and safe sex programs in our, in our public schools. But we're not talking about those things because we're spending so much time talking about the sensationalistic, sexy, diversionary issues and not focus where we should be. So let's have a serious dialogue about HIV and AIDS and continue that. But let's not sensationalize it just to get attention. 
And, and might I say that we did try to contact the L.A. Gay and Lesbian Center to try and join us on this program to have this live discussion, but they said they were fairly represented in the piece that we just saw and so that they declined our invitation to be on live. Now, when we talk about the stigma that now is coming with this uh, and being promoted by this campaign saying that HIV and AIDS is a gay disease, are we not now undermining the fact that among the fastest growing population of those who are contracting this virus happen to be black women who are heterosexual? Well, well actually, the, well, here's the issue. This is part of what I wrote about in my last book. The, the real co population that's at risk are black men. Black men are pr primarily at risk. There are 14,000 black male HIV, AIDS, HIV cases last year, or AIDS cases last year, and 7,000 black female AIDS cases last year. And so black men are disproportionately at risk, but we don't talk about them in part because it's easy. So here's the issue. It's easy for